please stand as you're able. I am the resurrection and I am the life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though she die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself and none becomes her own master when she dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Lizanna. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing Joyful, Joyful in the Blue Hymnal, Hymn 376. <laughs> For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to my path as for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life. Long. reading from the book of Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak only eat vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on slaves of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all the fully convinced in their own minds, those who observe one day, observe it for the Lord, and those who eat, eat for the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain for the Lord and give thanks to God. For we do not live, excuse me, for we do not live to ourselves, and we do not dive to ourselves. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will stand, for we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the people, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This indeed is the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise we do not live to ourselves, we do not die to ourselves. I've heard stories of Lizanna bustling into Christ Church in the 1980s and 90s with her four sons, with Andrew and Hovering and John and Christopher and her husband Paul. I'm assuming a family of six taking up a whole pew. All of her sons will be gathering later this year with their spouses and children and extended family in Cincinnati, Ohio 
where Lizanna was born, to inter her ashes with Paul in a family plot with those who have gone before into the communion of saints. We are gathered here today for Lizanna's funeral because this is what she wanted, a funeral at Christ Church, her church home with her church family. Patricia Shoemaker, who was backyard neighbors with Lizanna and the LaPlantes, remembers how involved she was at Christ Church. She was on the board of the Women's Guild, the YPF Youth Group Advisor, rummage sale director for six years. She and Paul chaired the Highlanders, which was a social group at the church, which is fondly remembered, and chaired a gala at the Chanticleer. Am I saying that correctly? which was an old supper club, 150 years old, that I learned uh, from the internet was torn down in 2011. Patricia says that Lizanna's work ethic and spirit were strong and drew others in. And she was always involved in a project. She rolled up her sleeves and her planning was unparalleled. Lizanna's obituary also highlights her time as a teacher in Greenwich, Connecticut, her involvement at her son's schools, including being PTA president. She was involved with the Junior League and volunteered for Meals on Wheels and New Eyes for the Needy. She loved sports. I think my husband has your dad's old golf bag. And loved needlepoint and art and cooking and dancing. But her obituary says that her true passion and gift was entertaining family and friends. Lizanna requested all of the hymns and all of the readings for today's service, and I was especially struck at her general request for Paul's letter to the Romans, which is not an easy text, and her specific request for Paul 14, 1 to 11. This chapter is actually the climax of Paul's magnum opus, and it centers on the themes of welcome and hospitality. On first reading, you might say, what is Paul talking about with his references to eating vegetables or one day being better or not better than another? But he's talking about debates in the early church about diets and calendars, which we still have debates about today. Specifically, that some followers kept kosher and others ate whatever they wanted, and some observed the Lord's Day on different days of the week. In St. Paul's eyes, both of these are what theologians and philosophers refer to as adiaphora, or non-essentials. What is essential, Paul argues, is welcoming everyone into the church community. And being a community that is committed to Jesus, who lived and died for us, and that we are called to live and to die for one another and for Jesus, who is Lord of the living and those in eternal life. Michael Gorman in his book on Romans says that Paul was actually a pretty practical theologian whose theology always points towards real life. For St. Paul, Gorman says hospitality is an essential habit for Christians of different cultures who constitute one culture in Christ, what some have called a third space that overcomes the distinctions that we too often stress. They should worship together, share meals, including the Lord's Supper or communion, and engage in mission and service together. I only knew Lizana in her later years, but I remember her coming to lunch bunch volunteering at the rummage sale, attending social events, and being at church every Sunday, not alone, but with a, an entourage, with her aides, sometimes with Andy, sometimes with Esther who drove her and it began to bring her own sons and her father with her. Lazana's extended church family during that period of life also filled up a pew, and sometimes two. There was one Sunday that they arrived a little bit late, and there was a new family of visitors who sat in Lizanna's pew, which led to a little bit of reshuffling for Lizanna and her aides. Um, 
but we realized that Lizana's wheelchair fit just right into the space behind, in front of the um, uh, baptismal font behind where Sandra is sitting, where there was a shorter pew. And after that, we put wheelchair signs up in those two shorter pews to designate them as accessible pews. This was not their original design or intention, but since then they have been used that way by other visitors and members alike. Even when Lizanna was not able to be an active organizer or entertainer, she helped to make this church more welcoming for others. As Ecclesiastes says, to everything there is a season. In the text from John's Gospel today, Jesus proclaims, anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven that I should lose nothing of all that God has given me, but raise it up on the last day. William Countryman in his commentary on this passage says that John repeatedly redirects our attention from externalities, from adiaphora, to the one central fact of Jesus, through whom all things exist, and without whom there is nothing. Today, we will have Eucharist as part of our service, and all are welcome to gather at the Lord's table. When Lizanna was with us, she actually pulled the clergy and the sidesmen out of the chancel, away from the altar, every week into the congregation where we brought her communion and the bread of life. To honor her memory and her legacy, her faithfulness and hospitality, her work in the world and service in the church, her family and all those that she brought to Christ Church. Today, Patricia and I will distribute communion from what will always be in my mind, Lizanna's spot. For our dear sister Lizanna, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Lizanna and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Lord. Our dear sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. God of all, we pray to you for Lizanna and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. 
May her soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please join us in singing, I am the bread of life in the blue hymnal, page, um, hymn number 335. Eucharistic prayers and the 
uh, Book of Common Prayer on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal bodies lie in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer to you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And in the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please stand and join me in Amazing Grace in the Blue Hymnal on page 671. Please join me in the post-communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance, that kingdom where there is no death, neither sighing nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints. For sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying you are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, Yet even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Lizana. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the everlasting, to the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company 
of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Please join me in the closing hymn on page 208 of the Blue Hymnal. Invited to join us for a reception in Parish Hall.